you were to fall from the sky onto the top of Darkseer's head, would it impale you or would you crush him? Today, we are not going to find the answer to that. Okay, so right off the board, you saw the old Tabbers guide at the start, you saw Echo Saber, you saw Helm of the Dominator, you're thinking, all right, Helm could make sense, but Echo Saber on Darkseer? Now you're waiting for the punchline. But the fact is, there is no punchline, there's only punch. This is Punch Seer. Fisticuffs DS, and the funniest thing about the joke is how surprisingly good it is. Ishkafel, the Darkseer, for those of you who <laughs> don't know, is from a place beyond the wall according to his lore. Also in his lore is the line, Darkseer requires no edged weapons to vanquish his enemies, relying on the strength of his powerful mind. Strangely, uh, it doesn't mention punching people to death, so I guess this build is actually not canon. Anyway, Darkseer was this awesome general and he fought in this massive war against this way larger army to defend his people. Knowing his people were close to defeat, he led the enemy into this maze between his world and the Dota world, and right before he was captured by them, he sealed the walls to trap his captors, he gets thrown into Dota's universe, and his people are safe on the other side, with the enemy left trapped inside in the middle to, I guess, starve to death. So he saves his people, but sees himself in a new world with no way to return, and now he lives to prove himself worthy as a general in this new world. And that's how we got to the Dota arena. So, uh, Darkseer is this fucking cool dude who saved his people by dooming himself. And they fucking put him on Dire, the evil side. Look at the official Dota 2 Heroes webpage. On the left of Darkseer is a demon so evil the guy's managing hell sent him to hell's hell. And he broke out. He killed everyone and broke out. And below Darkseer is Shadow Demon who straight up sought to enslave all of existence and who was only stopped because Shadow Fiend and Satan himself thought, damn dude, this is a bit too evil, even for us. But my boy Darkseer ain't scared. He's a fucking badass. What I both love and hate about Darkseer is that he can win a solo off lane against three people without doing anything. It's just luck of the draw. If all three heroes are melee, you've won. And even if they're not uh, and you get pressured out of the lane, you can just go into the jungle, their jungle, and clear their creeps. And even after that, if these heroes build summons or illusions or are countered by DOTs, they can't do anything. If we were to pull up a power pyramid to demonstrate this, right at the top would be Templar Assassin. Because of how Iron Shell's damage ticks and how much damage it does per tick, TA gets damage through refraction until level 3 Iron Shell after it starts dealing more than 5 damage per tick, which is refraction's minimum. After that point, TA's shield lasts 0.6 seconds. If she gets the level 25 talent, it lasts 0.9 seconds. So, let's hope she gets that talent. Same with Treant and his living armor, plus vacuum breaks trees, so he can't hide in them. Uh, on tier 2 are illusion and summon based heroes like I touched on a second ago. PL, Brew, Terrorblade, CK, anyone who builds Manta, depending on what MMR you're at, Meepo also goes in there. This clip will explain why. Tier 3 are... Uh, they're melee heroes, just melee heroes, all of them. On the flip side, heroes who counter Darkseer go ranged heroes, but they occupy the third tier. The second tier are tanky heroes, be it from health or magic resistance, but the biggest counter to Darkseer is an oracle, just oracle. You beat Darkseer by beating him in lane, diffusers won't cut it because you pick them up way too late. Anyone who can stop his surge can beat him, Fury and Sprout, Lone Druids and Tangle, Bloodseekers Rupture and Coddle's Mana Leak, but Oracle purges Surge, purges Iron Shell, and even without that can kill any creep Shell is on. Oracle is great. I should really make a guide for him sometime. As with every only way to play I've made, you can find this one in game as well as on YouTube. Man, I have not said that in a while. The skill build is as follows. What's crazy is every single one of Darkseer's spells is his signature spell. Think Earthshaker, his is Fissure, Tides is Ravage, Doom is Doom. But w when you think of DS, what's his best ability? The one you, the one you pick him for? I don't know. It's like every single one. A vacuum is a great wombo combo spell, but when you're doing wombo combos, that's a lot later into the game, so we max it last. It can put people onto cliffs still, leading to the cliff behind me. With the new attack range, you can punch up the cliff too. It has a range of 500, but a radius of 550, so you can vacuum someone from 1000 range away. The damage is mediocre, it cancels channels, and is in fact a 0.5 second stun. And it breaks trees. What? 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 Side note. Here's an interesting interaction. It pulls and then breaks trees. This isn't important for anyone 
makes it Monkey King. As it stands, right now, if Monkey King's on the enemy team, he is pulled off the tree before it breaks, dodging the 4 second stun, but if he's on your team, he isn't pulled, therefore he is stunned. Something to keep in mind. Iron Shield is your bread and butter for this build. We max it first, but that's pretty normal. Casting on the same unit refreshes the duration, but does not stack. You can put it on enemies and allied units, but it'll only ever affect enemies. And you can have three Iron Shells on at once for a total of 270 damage per second. That's just under four Radiances. It also affects invisible units. Put it on Ricky, get Ricky to M click because it ticks so fast you can't actually see the damage disappear with a white bar. Yet again, depending on your tier, you can use this forever. Wall of Replica always casts perpendicular to Darkseer, which is a big boy word for sideways. Place it in front of any towers they're pushing, behind any towers you're pushing, in choke points, all the normal stuff, and now it slows. So now we've started getting it at level 6 as a sort of pseudo area denial, specifically because you can cast Iron Shell on the illusion and have him follow the hero. That is until we get to something a lot better. But before that, big reveal. The reason this build will work, talent. Level 10, 12% evasion is better for the frontlining Darkseer we're about to become, but the talent that created the guide is at level 15, 120 damage. 120 damage is two Daedalus's, Daedalus, one half of a Divine Rapier, and we get it at about minute 20 without even taking up an item slot. I sort of don't even need level 20 and 25, so I guess I'll let you guess those ones. The thing with talents is that until they're available to you, you have to play like a normal pre-talent hero would. But for Darkseer, that's easy. Start off the game with Tango's Stout Shield, two Clarities, and a Soldering Recipe. Yes, I'm endorsing starting a game with a recipe. It'll only happen this once. It's better than taking the courier from the other lanes when we actually need the recipe. Obviously, with the Soldering Recipe, we're about to build a blood. No, wait, a Soul Ring. After that, plain old boots. We'll use these to chase down enemy heroes between Surge Charges and then either Headdress or Ring of Health, depending on how bad you need the region. Both items build into our core items, the first of which is... Helm of the Goddamn Dominator. It truly can be bought on every hero these days. Basically dominate any creep at all, it gives 425 movement speed, chuck on Iron Shell and aim click to follow any hero, but it doesn't stop there. You can surge the creep for it to stun if it's a centaur or purge if it's a satyr, and now you can even wombo combo all by your lonesome. Vacuum into stomp, into clap, into speed aura. Okay, yeah, I guess literally just stomp or clap, but hey, it's, it's awesome in itself. Uh, now you can dive towers, you can push waves, you can jungle two camps at once, at least. Chuck Iron Shell on both you and your pet, high five, and go your separate ways. Afterwards, pick up Vanguard to tank up a little more, and then we get Echo Saber. With 120 damage on the horizon, all we need to do is deal that damage. We need a way to keep enemies near, and we need attack speed. Echo Saber does both, and it gives mana and int, because you are an int hero, remember. All items that do the job of keeping someone locked down are SNY, Rotovatos, Basher, but all of these have their faults. SNY gives no int, Basher has no attack speed, Rotovatos actually is really good if you need it. Follow it up by finishing your treads if you want, or saving for Boots of Travel, and pick up a Solar Crest. But then again, I get Solar Crest on every single hero. Situationally, instead of treads, make Greaves, Blink is good, AC is good, Shivas, actually anything you get on a normal DS. Because really, this is normal DS, he still does the exact same job, but now without skipping a beat, he turns his worst quality, his attack damage, into his primary stat. And that's what's great about this entire thing, he doesn't lose anything. He can still get Blink, vacuum into a Wombo combo, he can still Iron Shell his Pudge and surge him off to get a Rampage, he can still defend high ground with Wall of Replica. He's the exact same hero under the hood, but now he can fulfill the badassery promised in his lore. Or you can just do this. I apologize in advance for the people next door having loud sex, but man, I... I'm excited for you to see this, the the video, not the the other thing that I just mentioned. Welcome to episode one of the only way to play's weekly upload schedule. This one was a bit short, so I think I'll upload another short one. Every week will either be one 10 to 15 minute video or two six to seven minute videos. From now until I guess when I die. But and yes, I'm about to advertise something right now. I can only do this because of people who pledge on Patreon. My aptly named pledges. Now there's a checklist for doing these Patreon appeals. Number one is I have to make it seem like if you don't give me money, I will immediately stop making videos just to spite you. If I've learned anything from big YouTubers, it's that the best way to make a living is to make it seem like I'm desperately in need of it or I'll die. So give me money or I'll die. 
okay check second i have to make it seem like you're really paying for a product and that supporting me is just a bonus so if you donate 100 dollars to me i will mail you a picture of me holding up a 100 dollar nose that seems worth the money third i have to put my marketing degree into practice so there are only three more slots left in stock for a limited time only every single patreon pledge is 99 percent off that $20 pledge over there, yesterday, it was $2,000. That's loss aversion in full effect. Better buy fast, the price will go up again. But no, all of that aside, I offer one thing. If you don't like a video, message me with why. If you give constructive criticism, I'll give you a full refund. I'm not in the business of good enough. I don't want to plateau here and make these guides for the rest of time. I want to better myself, and you can help me with that. The following is a list of Patreon pledges who helped with this video. They include... Brandon Koo, Foxy Loxy, Free Kill, Chris, Serf 1996, Pearson Mewborn, Zelnor, please make mid Oracle build, working on it. Shoops, Mr. Revolute, Akroma McAngel Face, Shadow Sweetheart, Jeff Miller, Jacob Miller, Grumpy Bear, Philip Cornelius, and Turd Ferguson 67, Kaiser Wilhelm, Michael Rob, Aaron Tang, and Evil Motherfucking Jellyfish. Zwak, Hunterfield, Parker Bukowski, Red, Snuggly Wuggums, Yabas McGee, Christian Rudder, Myla Cot, Booty Souffle, Tsunami Shadow, Wh Whitlow, It's I Effret, Edge is a Dono, Dump, Shafats, Gazer, Shaft, Copy, Dan that's supposed to be hard, boy. Triant, Anthony Silverstone, Lewis Edwards, Pro S, Redler, Smitty, Webin, Jaegerman, Jensen, Keras, and Nika the Commie, and as always, Rhett Mitchell. That dude has been pledged to me since 2013. The fuck's wrong with him, right? If you do sign up, and everyone who's already signed up, could you change your name to some tongue twisters? That was really fun. And uh, I'll see you in a day or two for Midlitch.